Now to a story you'll see only on 12. This year we commemorate the 60th anniversary of the Montgomery bus boycott. It was a turning point in history and it produced civil rights leaders like Martin Luther King Jr., attorney Fred Gray, and Rosa Parks. And there were many other pioneers of the movement you may never know. We caught up with a woman now living in the Bronx in New York. While her name may not sound familiar, what she did on a Montgomery bus changed the course of history. Claudette Colvin was 15 years old when she was heading home from school on a Montgomery City bus. The bus driver ordered her to give up her seat to a white passenger. It happened March 2nd, 1955, and at the time, she did the unthinkable. She refused. I didn't think I would be arrested. I knew there was some action was going to take place. She was arrested and charged with assault and battery of an officer, disorderly conduct, and violation of segregation laws. Colvin was fed up. Most of the people ask me, so why, why didn't you get up when the bus driver asked you to get up? So my favorite line, I said, well, I couldn't get up because history had me glued to the seat. Her story didn't immediately hit the national spotlight. Instead, nine months later, Rosa Parks did the same thing, and she became the face of a movement that led to the Montgomery bus boycott. I think they were looking for the right person to, to, for the face of the movement, the total movement. But why not Colvin? Many speculated it was her age, or maybe a pregnancy not long after her arrest. Attorney Fred Gray, who represented well, Colvin and Parks happy. in court, said it was timing. Nobody was doing what they were doing at that time for recognition. People look back now at 60 years, but you have to look at it in terms of what was the situation at that particular time. Times were tense under Jim Crow laws. The schools were segregated. Marriage between the races was considered a crime. And if a white person needed to sit down on a city bus, a black person would be asked to give up his or her seat. Gwen Patton is an archivist for Trenum State Community College. She says it was time for action. These folks were sitting in the black section of, of the bus. They were not breaking a law, the white folks' law, the Jim Crow law. But the pattern, the custom, the more was if the white section of the bus got full, then black people had to get up by rows accordingly. The Montgomery bus boycott lasted more than 380 days, and just about every black resident in the city refused to ride the segregated buses. But while the bus boycott was going on, attorney Fred Gray and others were working on a federal case against the city and the state that would go all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. But Rosa Parks wasn't named in that suit. Attorneys didn't want to appeal her case for fear it would get tied up in the state court system. So Gray called on Colvin and four other women, also unfairly treated on a city bus, to become plaintiffs in Browder versus Gale, the case that ended bus segregation. That's why he had to come back to the rejects. We were rejects, me and Mary Louise Smith Ware. Because they had said Mary Louise Smith, well, her father was an alcoholic, but that wasn't true. And, you know, that I was pregnant, so we would not fit the profile. But they had to come back to us. Attorney Gray said despite the gossip, calling on them was a matter of getting justice. If she had not been arrested on that date, there would have been no trial on December 5th. There would have been no meeting at Hope Street Baptist Church. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. would not have been introduced to the community, to the nation, and to the world, and the whole civil rights movement may have been different. Colvin doesn't regret what she did that day. She's not bitter at how some have portrayed her past. Her joy comes in knowing that Rosa Parks was able to continue what she started on a Montgomery City bus 60 years ago. Claudette Colvin moved to New York a few years after her arrest. She's retired and spends a lot of time sharing her story. She has a book called Claudette Colvin, Twice Toward Justice. Right now on WSFA.com, you can learn more about her story in the interview we shot with her. She talks about her arrest, her relationship with Rosa Parks, and the case in which she was a plaintiff that ended segregated busing in the South.